Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on the energy of a photon. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Uh, just in the last video, we talked about this formula that related frequency and uh, wavelength using the speed of light. In this video, we're going to talk about another formula that relates energy and frequency. Um, I kind of alluded to this in my video on electromagnetic radiation, right? I, I, I implied that if you have higher frequency, that tends to do more damage to, to a human being, right? That's why gamma rays, which have such high frequency, also do the most damage. Well, the, the reason it, that, that high frequency does more damage is because of this equation right here. E equals H nu where E represents the energy of a photon. I guess I shouldn't use the equal sign. Equal it, it represents it. Represents energy. H is just a constant, and H is called the Planck's constant. And it has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. <laughs> what a what a constant, right? Uh, it's a very important concept. Uh, constant. Make sure you know it. It's particularly important for this exact video. Uh, and then the last one, uh, new, just like in the last video, new represents frequency. Frequency. So so the reason that when you have high frequency, that corresponds with a high amount of energy. So high frequency gives you high energy, and when more energy is being put into your, your body, that can be very damaging. You know, it can be very damaging to the cells of your body if you're just being constantly input with tons and tons and tons of energy. So that's sort of the big reason why, why I personally associated high frequency with more damage to the body. Okay, so this is the equation I'm going to be using. Um, we're trying to find the energy, the energy, of a photon. Also, by the way, what is a photon? I think I mentioned this in previous videos, but a photon is, is basically like a packet of light. It's a little light packet. Uh, because the big thing with, with light is it can be viewed as either a particle or a photon, a, a sort of singular little piece of light. You know, and when we have a beam of light, it's really just a ton of these tiny little photons. This is like a beam of light. <laughs> it's just a bunch of, of tiny little particles, tiny little photons together. Um, so that's one way you can view light. The other way is to view it as a wave, and, and it has been shown that, that light acts as both a photon and a wave, uh, depending on what situation you're working with. So um, that's what a photon means. So essentially, to calculate the energy of one photon, we're asking for the, the light energy. Uh, but the yellow light was given to us with a wavelength of 589 nanometers, just like the last problem. This equation requires frequency. So we're just going to have to use the previous formula that we got from the last uh, equation as well. Remember, our previous formula is C equals lambda nu, where, where C is the speed of light. which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And lambda is wavelength. Um, so we'll have to use this equation because we don't know what, what nu is, but we do know what lambda is. So we can actually solve for nu up here. Nu equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength, right? If we just divide lambda over. And then we can take that value and substitute it in here to get energy is Planck's constant times C over lambda. So HC over lambda. And we know what H is, that's Planck's constant. C is the speed of light, that's also a constant. Lambda was given to us as 589 nanometers, which we would have to convert into meters. So plugging all that stuff in, so we have 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. We have the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and then our wavelength, which I'm going to convert from nanometers to meters. So 589 nanometers is 589 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. 
we realize that this second cancels out with this one over second. This meter cancels out with this meter in the denominator. So all we're left with is joules, which makes sense because we're looking for energy and joules is a unit of energy. Once we do all this multiplication, we get 3.37 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's how much energy is in a photon of light. So not a lot, but, but photons of light and I mean atoms in general, they get their power from their numbers, right? A beam of light has a tremendous amount of photons in it. Astronomical, like more than millions, more than billions, just a huge amount of photons. So even though each individual photon is low in energy, collectively, they are a huge amount of energy. All right, so big takeaway from this is this equation right here. E equals H nu gives you the energy of a photon. Thank you for watching. As I mentioned, I work for the tutoring centers uh, on campus. If you want more information about the free tutoring resources available on all four major ASU campuses and online, check out tutoring.asu.edu slash content slash tutor dash search. When you go here, uh, you'll be able to find a tutor on your campus or online that'll be able to help you with your specific class. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.